Parents of Reddit, what is the creepiest thing your kid, s, has ever said or done? I overheard a girl tell her mom, her eyes are pretty, referring to the new daycare employee, I wanna wear them on my charm bracelet. Kind of sweet I guess. My cousin who is 3, he keeps referring to any woman he sees as tasty. We would be watching a movie and he would point out a woman and say she is tasty. What he means is that she is beautiful. I can't even walk with him outside because I am afraid he might point out to some woman and say that she is tasty. Currently imagining a 3 year old saying every woman he sees is looking like a snack. I was napping on the couch and my then 3 year old was standing there with a toy. Felt sore. I woke up to him saying I'm going to saw mommy's head off uh, nope. Floating head mommy. On a long drive through central western Pennsylvania, all farms and hills or forests and low mountains, my 5 year out of nowhere says, this will look really cool as a wasteland, you know, after everyone dies, as much as we asked, he didn't elaborate on that, h, comma h. My niece and nephew were 13 and 15 at the time and we were watching them for my brother-in-law while he was out of town. At about 3am I get shaken and awake to two visibly upset teens who start sobbing about a dead woman trying to get in my niece's bedroom window. This jolts my husband out of bed in a hurry. He grabs his handgun and tells me to stay with the kids. They live in a mobile home that sits on risers. So this window is roughly 9 feet at its base. He goes down the hallway and I hear him shout. What the frick and run back to the front door and outside. Now the niece and nephew are losing their minds. Not wanting their uncle getting hurt so I call the cops and walk to the door to see what's going on. The dead woman was in fact a woman hopped out of her mind on who knows what. Naked. And she did very much look like a corpse. She had been standing on the roof of my truck. Trying to see in the windows. Yeah. We had to call 9. 1. 1. On an ambient lady. Convinced that we had locked her out of her house. Woke up my infant and 2 year old. Best bit was watching the city police quietly surround our house. From all sides. At the same time. Great training. My 4 year old likes to play this make believe game where she is having a baby and needs it cut out of her. We have never explained to her what a C section is. Then the baby always has some sort of deformity. Like no eyes or arms or something. And she needs to try again to have a better baby and she is just going to throw the bad one out. My wife and I have refused to play this game with her once we noticed the pattern. But now she is drafting her younger sister into it and they love it. I'm torn between making them stop or just being happy they're playing so nicely together. Edit. After seeing some comments, I will add that my wife and I do not let our kids watch YouTube unattended. We have discussed this weird game with our daughter and do monitor it. But overall it just seems harmless despite its creepiness. That's a tough decision. Little siblings playing together nicely is a rare and peaceful. So, my son and I stood watching his then 2 years old daughter as she stood looking, laughing, and chatting away in toddler gibberish at, nothing, in a completely empty hallway. We just watched her and looked at each other with a WTF look on our faces. Same granddaughter, some years later, still sleeps with me when she visits because that girl scares her. That's all she'll say because evidently the girl told her not to tell anyone about her. And now that girl scares all of you. When we first moved into our new house, our 4 year old refused to go upstairs. When asked why, he replied I don't want the things upstairs to defeat me. I get it, little man. I don't want the things upstairs to defeat me either. At least he said defeat and not kill or murder. My husband is a farmer. One night he asked me to pick him up after working ground and it was pretty late, around 10 o'clock. So I loaded our two girls up then 4 and 2 and headed to the field. We get to the field and see is finishing up his last round so we had to wait for a minute. I rolled the windows down in the van and shut the engine off. After a few minutes my 2 year old says, Mommy, who dat man outside I said, I don't see a man. Is your Ken doll on the floor my 4 year old then piped up. He's right outside your door and staring at you. He's scary. He has blood on his face. That's when I turned the key, rolled the windows up, locked the doors and called my husband and told him to hurry the heck up because the girls are terrified and there's apparently a scary man outside my door that I can't see but both girls are describing him and what he's doing. 
Thankfully C was done and heading up to the van at that moment and we left. My girls are now 5 and 7 and they both still remember that man and refuse to go to that particular field. I have to ask my mill to watch them when I need to pick their daddy up from there. You're winning this thread. Not a parent but a good story about my sister. She was about 3 years old and we were getting ready to go to our uncle's house for dinner. She was being really fussy and didn't want to get changed so my dad asks her don't you want to go to uncle Dan's house. She then responded saying no. I don't like the man in the ceiling. We though it was an odd thing to say but didn't give much thought. A few years later we were helping my uncle sell the house and it came out that someone had killed themselves in the attic back in the 90s. I looked at the video monitor to make sure my 2 year old daughter was finally asleep since she hadn't made noise in a while. I see her standing up in her crib. She slowly bends over to the side, dongs her head towards her knee, and says hi. How did she know I was looking at the monitor at that exact moment? Plus, the way she was bent at the waist looked humanly impossible, and the night vision function made her eyes look so creepy. My 4 year old talks about death a lot dead pets, dead family members weird but whatever. The one that freaks me out is when she mentions my dead grandma that got shot. We never talk about my husband's mom, who took her own life when my husband was a teenager. I'm a skeptic when it comes to the supernatural but it makes me wonder. My daughter at 2ish would also describe my father who passed away. She would talk about him with real facts before we told her about him. Posted this before. My 4 year old son had a habit of announcing when he had to use the bathroom. He would say I gotta go potty. One time he makes his business known and heads off toward the bathroom. He returns seconds later and says there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I do know for a fact that it's just the two of us home so the hair stands up on my neck. I ask him, what do you mean? He repeats, there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I'm thinking, is it someone I see dead people or someone in a hockey goalie mask? So I grab the biggest knife from my knife block and tell him to stay here. I walk to the bathroom, take a wide angle to see in, nobody. Slowly and quietly walk toward the shower and pull back the curtain. Nothing. By now my son has walked around the corner and I ask him where did you see the person he points to an unflushed toilet and says see, someone's already here. His big brother didn't flush the toilet. Ghost poop. My oldest daughter usually stands beside my bed at night. When she was 5 yo she already had long black hair. The creepy part was that she just stood there not even tried to wake me or my wife up. She were just standing there for 2 or 3 hours watching us. When she finished looking at us she'd go back to her bed and sleep like nothing happens. That was a really creepy time of my life. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night cause of an urgent need to pee and looking directly at her eyes. My 3 year old while eating dinner told me there was a man on the balcony with red eyes with his mouth gaping open, like a scream face. We live on the 3rd floor and the only access to that balcony is from inside. Needless to say I didn't turn around. He said so much weird things. We live in a really really old apartment, and I don't believe in ghosts, but he creeps me out. My oldest is almost 3 and she stares at fans that smiles really big. I'm waiting for the day she tells me about something living above the fan. I'm just the uncle, and my sill would be the one to ask for all the details. But I my niece apparently has an invisible friend with a blue face and red hair. Sill thought it was just an imaginary friend, until she talked with other parents and figured out that all the kids living in their neck of the woods have apparently seen the same man, blue face and red hair. But none of their classmates who live farther away did. Niece apparently gets frustrated sometimes when she points at an empty spot and says he is right here. You don't see him this is something several neighbors have reported their kids did as well. Sounds like you've got a small infestation of knack mac feagles. Crivens. When he was around 2 1 stroke 2 my son and I were driving home at night. Car seats were in the front then, 30 years ago. He turned to me and said I am not from here. I asked him where he was from. He explained to me that our world is a bubble amongst countless other bubbles. He said he was from another bubble. I don't think I even answered him. Colon zero. Makes perfect sense for me from a multiverse perspective. And the child. Bid my mom told me when I was about 3 I told her, very calmly, that the voices in my head are telling me to kill myself. 
I still don't really believe her but that's not really something she'd lie about. Haven't heard voices and so maybe they killed themselves? Victory. Back in the mid 60s, my cousin's family lived out near the ocean on the coast of Japan. It wasn't so built up back then, and they lived near a rocky cliff where a small lighthouse sat. My cousin was maybe 8 at the time, but he was sort of obsessed with turtles. He had a pet turtle with an odd name, and he took very good care of it, to the point where he didn't have much of a social life. It was a wild turtle he'd caught, and since he was missing out on socializing anyway, his parents eventually convinced him to let the turtle go. He let it go in a small pond nearby, but he'd go out to talk to it every day. Anyway, one day there was a big downburst coming up from the sea, it came out of nowhere and was absolutely ferocious. My cousin was caught out in the open and ran to the lighthouse for protection. The storm passed in a few minutes, but the sea was so ferocious that the lighthouse crumbled under the waves. My cousin was found slightly dazed but unharmed, sitting a few hundred yards from the rubble. Anyway, my cousin doesn't remember this today, but his parents told me that he wouldn't shut up about how his turtle had turned giant, come out of the sea, and caught him before flying away. His English wasn't the best, but he just kept repeating the same thing. Gamma is friend to children. That's not creepy, that's amazing and I automatically believe your cousin. Not parent. Kid says window appeared in wall between two rooms and he threw his toy through it. Door in other room locked with key nowhere near child. Parents couldn't explain how the kid's bear got into the other room. Probably learned to lockpick is the rational explanation. Not a parent, but a sister. A couple years ago, me and my sister, me 11 and her 14, were watching my 4 year old sister. She was always a little weird and said weird stuff but nothing too bad. Anyway, me and my sister were watching a movie and fell asleep by accident and when my mom got home she started screaming and shaking us to wake up. When we were asleep my mom must have called checking in on us and my little sister picked up and said I had to do it mommy had to kill them. I cussed sissy's throat and hung up. It still scares me sometimes. You know I had to do it to him. I woke up one morning to my 3 year old daughter standing over me staring. As soon as she saw me wake up she said I've been waiting for you mommy. The way she said this is important. I was the child. Some background info. Grew up in the country in the midwest. We do tea lock our doors around here. At least not in the country. We had a wood burning stove so had a logging road in our backyard that led into a meadow and then into woods where we would get our firewood. There is a surprising amount of local UFO stories in my particular corner of Wisconsin but at the time this story takes place I didn't know what an alien was or any of the stories or anything. I was about 4. One night my mom woke up to the sound of our front door opening and closing. She grabs a knife and goes out to investigate. In the light of the yard light she sees Bitty me walking barefoot out towards the logging road. She runs outside and grabs me and asks me what do I think I'm doing. Me. I have to go visit my friends. Mom. What? What friends? Me. My new friend. They told me to meet them in the meadow. I ended up explaining to my mom that my new friends can talk to me in my ward without being near me. That they don't wear clothes and they want to take me on a trip. There have been several cases of mutilated cattle over the years and if you ask the right questions to the right people. Loads of stories of lights in the sky and strange figures and what have you. My grandpa refused to ever talk about the night. All I know is the cattle were mutilated. My grandma cried if you brought it up and my grandpa would not let anyone talk about it in his presence. Since then, I have seen some pretty strange crap out at the farm. I do remember needing to meet my friends in the meadow. Do you know some more alien stories from there? Would love to hear them. Kid's friend hit a bubble and it split into two bubbles. She said it gave birth and was romantic. Then she pooped them and said murder is more romantic. She has consistently been telling us there is a ghost and wants us to close the doors of the rooms it is in because she is scared of it. Simple enough request to ease her mind. My little girl is 3. We've always had creepy incidents. But a few weeks back we had a week of her pointing near the bedroom window and talking about the boy with no eyes who was crying because he wanted me to be his mum. He stared at the corner and said, why is that man watching us, and why is his head like this then he turned his head at a sharp angle, similar to how a hanging victim would look. 
I tried to look up death suicides at our house and could find anything but needless to say it freaked me the frick out. I'm an uncle, but my nephews and I are like father and sons, although it's been a while since I last saw them. One day, they came in from playing outside saying, there's a man in the cane field. I went to check it and found some guys in full black with bats and knives just waiting. They ran when they saw the house was full, but if I never went to check, I might not be here today. Holy frick dude. I was a child. Mum was dreaming that my uncle was in the garden and it was snowing so she was desperately trying to get him to come inside. At 4 years of age I ran into her bedroom, woke her up and said mum mum mum, you've got to get uncle Paul out of the garden it's snowing. She freaked out. While changing my daughter in front of the open closet door, she kept looking around me and laughing. I asked her what was so funny, she said, the man. To which I replied, what man she then pointed at the closet and said, the man with the snake neck. I turn around and nothing was there. I'm afraid to look into the history of my house to see if anyone hung themselves in the closet. At least she wasn't scared. Time to move. Not my kid but my little cousin. We were outside on our porch and by the hot tub and he whispered it's your time and started trying to drown me. He was 6 and I didn't really have a problem taking him off but what the frick. Dude. Not a parent but I was once babysitting my niece, who was around 3 at the time, and she needed a bath before bed. I noticed as she was splashing around and playing with her toys she kept looking just over my shoulder into the corner of the bathroom and giggling. I looked over my shoulder and of course nothing was there. As I turned back to her she had a completely blank look on her face, stared directly into my eyes and said don't be scared then started giggling uncontrollably. Safe to say I snatched her out of the bath real quick and got her ready for bed. About half an hour after leaving her in the bedroom I heard her laughing and talking. I went in to check if she was sleep talking but she was sat upright, cross-legged in the middle of the bed as if she was chatting to someone sat opposite her. I asked her what she was doing and she said I'm talking to the man. What man I asked to which he replied the ghost, Stephen. I tucked her back into bed and she drifted off pretty quickly. I never asked her about it the next day but she's 6 now and doesn't remember a thing about it. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep with the light on that night. I don't know where she would have learned about ghosts at that age either but mum said me and my sisters used to do it as kids too. I'm not a parent, but I babysit this kid regularly so I think this counts. The girl I take care of was about 6 at the time. One day, she was playing with dolls and I saw her rip the head off one and put it in a box. Later that day, I looked inside said box and there was a whole bunch of stray heads. I asked what she was doing this for, and she replied, practicing. This creeped me out enough, but I asked her why and she said, the man wants me to practice so I can help him one day. I have a picture of him. Then she showed me the picture of this man. She drew it herself and it had gouged out eyes and a bloody mouth. I didn't babysit her again. Did you tell the parents? Oh uh, that's so creepy. She was 5 and she could speak normally. She was walking and stubbed her toe and she yelled the shakla mo shama da bolly frick we laughed and she got really embarrassed. She was putting a curse on the house. I used to babysit these two kids many decades ago. One of them was a really good kid. The other one was pretty much a juvenile delinquent. One day the juvenile delinquent got mad at what I cooked for dinner for the two of them. So he found a screwdriver and started chasing me and his little brother around the house with it. I had to call the parents, who acted like it was just a funny little thing that the kid did occasionally. Never babysat for them again. When I was a kid I used to play with a kid in the neighborhood whose little brother would throw bricks at us when we were jumping on his their trampoline. His mom acted like it was just a funny thing he did and yelled at the older brother when he retaliated. He threw bricks. Not a parent, but my cousin is. This was about last year. For Alan's sake I'll call him Dave. We were out on an all day fishing trip and told me that if I wanted to spend the night at his place. I was more than welcome to, not seeing him in a while and still wanting to shoot the crap. I said sure, he lives in a rancher with his wife of 2 years, and their 7 year old son. He's a good part older than me. When we got back to his place, we had dinner, watched TV, normal things with nothing eventful happening. 
Eventually his wife and son went to bed which left us alone in the living room. That's when I asked him, you liking this place so far? Mind you, the last time we saw each other, he was living in a different place at the time. He said yeah but was making a face that you could tell he wanted to say more. He eventually followed up with, don't get me wrong, this place is great but there's just something weird about it. I don't know what it is. Which I told him it's a new place and he probably hasn't gotten used to it quite yet. He agreed and we went back to watching some show when we could faintly hear his son talking. We just look at each other and dismiss it thinking he was talking in his sleep or something. An hour goes by and it's getting late. And Dave can still hear his son talking so he decides to check on him as to why he's up. He enters his son's room with a hey buddy why are you? This is followed up by him shuffling to pick up his son and carry him out slamming on the door. And waking his wife and sending us all out of the house. I'm obviously freaked. Dave is freaked. His wife, Jen, is groggy and confused. But their son is just poker face about the whole situation. No reaction. As soon as I know we're all out on the sidewalk in front of his house when he asks me to call the police. I oblige. Not even thinking if it was a prank. And wait. I ask him what happened man. Took him a while to gather a response. Then he looked at me with the weirdest facial expression and said. He was on his bed sitting up talking towards the closet. When I looked over to see what was in there. I saw an old man. And I swear to god man. He was smiling at me. He was tearing up as he was telling me this. Police arrive. They check the house. No sign of entry at all. Everything except the front door is locked. When everything was said and done. Dave made everyone sleep out in the living room at night. I went home. And 4 months after that night. They moved. I see him even more since he ended up moving closer to me. I asked him if he moved because of the man he saw. And he'll just shrug it off. Almost like he saw him again. Either way. Something happened that night. Now his son plays Fortnite. So you decide what's creepier. My 7 year old told me that his old family died in a fire with him and now he has a new family. Ours. He told me the names of his siblings and what his parents looked like. What house looked like. When he died. So much detail. I wrote it all down as he talked and after he went to bed. I looked it up. Everything he said matched this one old news story. Everything he said fit. This news story I never even heard before and it was about a year and a half before he was ever conceived. Seven is old for that stuff too. Usually in these stories, it's a three or four year old and then they forget by the time they're a little old. That is really interesting. My friend's child stuck his finger up a dog's butthole he was too the dog apparently was none too pleased by this surprise prostate exam. I've heard a surprising amount of stories like this. When my child was about 4 stroke 5 he started going to a school style daycare, prepping for kindergarten. He told me one day that there was a girl named Callie in his class who lived in the woods. Didn't think much of it. A few days later he keeps mentioning Callie and his conversations with her while at school. Since I wanted to know who his new friend was I asked him if he could show her to me. To which I was immediately replied with no, she's dead. He later explained she died in a fire and couldn't leave the daycare facility. We just shrugged it off as him being weird. One night around 9pm he began sobbing hysterically telling us we needed to go get Callie. She was stuck at school. No one could save her. We tried to call him down saying maybe her mom would come. Eventually he went to bed. He's 7 now and hasn't mentioned her since leaving the facility. Super weird. My son was around 2 years old and randomly one night he started to freak out. I tried to calm him down and was asking him what was wrong. He pointed at the bedroom window and said the woman on fire was going to take him. I don't believe in ghosts, demons, or anything like that but I was kinda sketched out. A burning woman. That's pretty creepy for a toddler to think up to. I was the kid in this story, and sure of the age, my grandfather still recalls it. We were driving through the Blue Ridge Parkway, me, mom, and grandparents at some random point I just said out loud this would be a good place to dump a dead body. Less than a week later, on the news police found a dead woman outside of the woods far enough from the road you could see her. Spooked my grandfather like crazy. So it wasn't a good place to dump a dead body. 
My son was probably 4 at the time. He's in the car with my mom and stepdad and starts talking about my stepdad's father dying. Mind you, I didn't know how he died and my stepdad has never talked about. My son goes into full detail how he was driving through the mountains and it was a really windy road and it was slippery and he went off the side of the mountain and there was blood all over his face and car. At the end of this in-depth explanation he looks at my stepdad and goes it must have been really scary for him. Well my stepdad is super freaked out by it because his dad did die in fact because he drove off the side of a mountain while it was raining. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.